Are you looking for some really solid advice for dating from a Christian perspective? Well, in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys five of my top recommended must read books on Christian dating. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. On this video, we're gonna be talking about some of the best books on Christian dating. Now, many of you guys are following along in our one month series of videos on Christian dating, but what do you wanna do if you wanna dive deeper and to learn more for yourself? Well, you are in luck. I have some really great recommended books that I personally have learned a ton from. And what's cool is that if you'd like to support this channel and actually get one of these books for free, our friends over at audible.com have actually made this video possible. So in order to support the channel and grab a free audio book for yourself, head over to audibletrial.com slash thatchristianvlogger for a free download. But let's get started. Book number one is Love and Respect by Dr. Emerson Egrich. The very first time that I was exposed to Dr. Emerson's series of talks and books was almost 10 years ago when I was still a student at the Bible college that I went to. Now, thankfully, at that school, we had an entire class on marriage and the family, and this actually really helped me to kind of understand the different dynamics and what makes a relationship successful. Part of the core curriculum was actually built around the concepts presented in this series, Love and Respect. If you've never heard of the series, the basic premise is that men and women have basically two fundamentally different needs. On average, women have a huge need to feel loved, and when they feel loved, they're gonna be happy and productive, they're just gonna have a great time. But men, on the other hand, are actually a little bit different. Of course, feeling loved is a nice thing, but men, more than feeling loved, they want to feel respected. Now, obviously, these are some generalizations when speaking very broadly like this, but I actually found this series to be super relatable. There's books and workbooks that are available, but for the full experience, I would highly suggest that you check out some of the available videos for this series. Dr. Emerson has an incredible talent in presenting the information in a very relatable and funny way. In fact, many times at class, I was literally LOLing because of something that he had said, because he just has a way to communicate truths and, and reality in such a funny and like entertaining way that it was almost like watching a comedy show the entire series. So as a side note, I actually think that this series would make for a great like date night experience or something like that. You not only get to hang out with each other and learn something new, but you have fun at the same time and it makes your relationship more successful. Book number two is actually two books in one. There's gonna be one for the men and one for the women, but the books are Wild at Heart or Captivating by John and Stacey Eldridge. Easily one of my favorite authors of all times is John Eldridge. Many of his books, like Wild at Heart, have actually helped me to understand myself as a man so much more. So for this one, I actually wanted to read to you guys the description of Wild at Heart in the uh, Amazon kind of description right here. It says, God designed men to be dangerous. I love that. Simply look at the dreams and the desires written in the hearts of every boy. To be a hero, to be a warrior, to live a life of adventure and risk. Sadly though, most men abandon those dreams and desires aided by Christianity that feels like nothing more than the pressure to be a nice guy. It is no wonder that many men avoid church and those who go are often passive and bored to death. Now, if you are a guy watching this, you know that that statement is so true. And you know, being completely transparent, this book actually helped me understand myself in so many different ways. I actually found myself at multiple times in the book with my mouth on the floor because I felt like, like John was explaining myself in ways that I never could actually articulate. And this book actually really helped me have the courage to, to quit my job and to follow my passions and my dreams and to actually create this channel. And actually, after reading this book, I decided that I would also read the one for women because I figured if I learned so much about men and, and myself from this book that I would really benefit a lot from learning about the, the women from the women's book. So let me read that description for you as well. Here's what it says. It says, every little girl has dreams of being swept up into a great adventure, of being the beautiful princess. But sadly, when women grow up, they are often swept into a life filled merely with duty and demands. Many Christian women then are tired, struggling under the weight of the pressure to be a good servant, a nurturing caregiver, or a capable home manager. So this book taught me a lot as well. What helped me the most actually was having some female friends that I could kind of bounce these ideas off. I wasn't uh, married at the time to Emily, and so I had a couple of like girlfriends that when I found something in the book that I couldn't believe, I would actually ask them like, hey, is, is this true? Because this seems so crazy. And uh, you know, just being able to have a few friends who I could have open and honest conversations on this book that actually I felt like it really helped me to understand 
understand women just a little bit better. So check out either one of the books, or if you're brave, try them both. Book number three is The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman. Now, this is easily one of the most popular books out there on dating. In fact, several of my friends who've actually been helping me with this month's collaborations have already mentioned some of the concepts in this book a few times already. But the basic premise is that every single person both speaks and receives love in five different ways, in five different love languages. If you've never heard of them before, the five love languages are acts of service, physical touch, gift giving, quality time, and words of affirmation. For me, I'm mostly physical touch or gift giving, and Emily is mostly acts of service or words of affirmation. And for us, realizing that we are different has actually helped us to understand each other just a little bit better. And so if you're not sure which one you are yet, there's actually a quiz in the book to help you figure that out. Book number four is The Meaning of Marriage by Timothy Keller. If you've never heard of Timothy Keller, you absolutely owe it to yourself to check out his sermons or his videos, podcasts, or books. There are a handful of people out there in the world that no matter whatever it is that they're writing about, just simply because of who they are, I'm buying that book and I'm reading it. And Timothy Keller is one of these people. In my opinion, Tim Keller is one of the most effective apologists and communicators on Christianity. Specifically, I really appreciate his amazing ability to help make the teachings of scripture very, very relatable to the day and age that we live in. In this book, Timothy Keller shares from a Christian perspective what is the purpose of marriage and how do we navigate through some of the most difficult and challenging moments in a marriage and specifically how faith in God is one of those essential traits for a successful relationship. And before we jump into book number five, I wanted to encourage you guys to share your thoughts as well. What books would you add to the list and what are some of your favorite authors on the subject? Let us know in the comment section below. But book number five is none other than Boundaries for Dating by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. Now, as a quick disclaimer, I actually haven't read the entire book yet, but I was first introduced to this because about a year or two ago, when we were still living in Philadelphia, I was actually going through a very serious season of depression. With Emily's support, I ended up going to a Christian counselor to try and get some help, and the counselor recommended this book to me. Turns out that part of the reason that I was so depressed was actually because of the unhealthy habits and boundaries that I'd set up in some of my relationships. So thankfully, through prayer and God's help, I did make it out of that depressive state, and I do think that this book has helped me to create somewhat slightly healthier boundaries moving forward. There happen to be other books in this series that aren't just for dating, but for like work or family or other areas too that you might want to check out as well. Now I know that I said I would only be sharing five books for dating, but I can't end this video without mentioning, of course, the honorable book, the Bible. After all, this uh, channel is, you know, that Christian vlogger, so to not include the Bible would almost be a sin, I think. But many people oftentimes are very confused when it comes to reading the Bible, and so if that's you, I have some really great news because I have a free e-course on how to study the Bible available for you for free at that christianvlogger.com. So hopefully that course or any of the other books that I've mentioned in this video will actually help you have more effective and healthier relationships, relationships that God can bless today. But that's all I got for today. Hope this video helps. Let me know what you think and I will see you guys next time.